Hey everybody, Homeslice Henry here, and in today's video we're taking a look at some very fun battles in the Open Master League featuring a fully maxed level 50 Shadow Raikou. These battles were submitted to the channel by a member of the community, Master Irish, so many thanks for the battle submission. Shadow Raikou is a pure electric type Pokemon with the moveset of Bolt Switch, Wild Charge, and Shadow Ball. And it goes without saying, this is definitely more of a fun pick, not a Pokemon that's recommended for climbing. So today, we're going to be taking a look at some selected battles watching Shadow Raikou in action. Hopping into the first match, leading Xerneas into Shadow Dragonite, an amazing lead here for the Xerneas. Opponent will immediately save switch into their Landorus, and Landorus is going to be met with Palkia. Palkia does do quite well here. Landorus is going to be spamming out the Sand Seer Storms. Palkia is going to look to overfarm and fire off the Aqua Tail. This has been debuffed. Landorus has incentive to shield, as Landorus can now start to potentially threaten shields with the threat of a Stone Edge. We will see the shield, and it is the Stone Edge that proves to be a very important shield. Palkia again overfarming and firing off the Aqua Tail before the next move is reached, and Aqua Tail is going to be able to pick up the knockout. In comes the Shadow Dragonite. Palkia not going to make the Spatial Ren, forced to settle for the Aqua Tail. The good news is, is this energy doesn't really go anywhere into the Xerneas. So you can wait, send in the Xerneas in the back. It's a Ho-Oh and in comes Shadow Raikou. Shadow Raikou, these incinerates absolutely shredding it. Oh my goodness. Raikou will commit the shield as the Sacred Fire goes through. And Shadow Raikou gets to the back-to-back -back wild charges. This first wild charge will get the shield from the opponent. Shadow Raikou firing off wild charge number two. This is going to be goodbye to the Ho-Oh, knocking it out of the sky. Back in comes the Dragonite. Raikou falls just short of making it to the wild charge, but the opponent concedes the match. Tough lead in the next match, Xerneas into Landorus. Safe switch into the Palkia is able to bait out the Dialga. So the Landorus is going to be very difficult to deal with later on in the game, but at the very least, the Dialga is baited out. Because Shadow Raikou would get absolutely destroyed by a Dialga. Opponent is going to let themselves get as low as possible here as they fire off the last second Iron Head. This is a bit unfortunate as it is going to limit the amount of farm the Xerneas can get. Xerneas, unfortunately, only going to get one Geomancy of farm. In comes the Landorus, and Landorus is going to begin the Sand Seer Storm spam. Sandseer Storm is going to be no shielded by the Xerneas. Xerneas is going to farm up and fire off the Moonblast. This at minus one will still do some pretty solid damage. We do see the shield from this Landorus, and the Landorus ends up giving a free Geomancy to the Xerneas. This is quite nice. Unfortunately, the Xerneas has now been double debuffed. This Moonblast will still add up because Landorus is very glassy, but it's not going to be doing nearly the damage that it would before. The opponent gives up the final shield, and maybe there is a chance here. We're going to see the shield on the Sandseer Storm in the back. It's Kyogre. It's going to be a race here. The opponent is going to be hit with with the Shadow Wild Charge, and it's all over for the Kyogre. They get one shot, back in comes the Landorus. These Mud Shots are adding up. The opponent does not throw, and a Wild Charge is reached. This could potentially put Landorus into Volt Switch range, and it does. The Landorus forced to fire off energy here, as that Volt Switch may have been enough to KO. Sandseer will pick up the knockout, and the Xerneas has the Close Combat stored. Close Combat is going to take the win. That game looked really rough from the outset, but able to take the win. There's bad news as there's another Landorus lead in the next match. The Palkia save switch this time is not answered by Dialga, so it looks like the opponent doesn't have the Dialga in the back. The Sandseer will be no shield and they continue to stay in, and they're finally going to switch out and send in Yveltal. Unfortunately, the damage here is going to be debuffed, but Spatial Rend will still add up onto Yveltal. Yveltal is going to look to overfarm. They're firing off energy. Honestly, an Oblivion Wing probably KOs here, so we will see the shield. Well, they're actually running Dark Pulse instead of Oblivion Wing. Interesting. And now Palkia will return fire with the Aqua Tail. The Aqua Tail does get shielded. Unfortunately, not able to flip switch. I like the decision to just let this go and go for farm on the Xerneas. Because Xerneas up energy will do very well into that Landorus. So now, the hope of course is that the opponent is going to bring back in the Landorus. Because you really do not want the Shadow Raikou to be stuck against Lando. We do see Xerneas able to get the full farm down and they do send back in the Landorus. This is basically best case scenario here. Because the Xerneas has a massive energy head start. 
Xerneas, very comfortable surviving a Sandseer Storm here. This is not going to be enough to knock out, whereas a minus one Moonblast will come very close to knocking out. We're going to see a switch. It's another Kyogre in the back. Oh no, and they don't throw the Surf right away. They're just going to get knocked out by the Shadow Wild Charge. Back in comes the Landorus. Landorus, these mud shots adding up quite a bit, able to make it to the Shadow Ball, losing charge attack priority, but Shadow Raikou wants to try and get rid of a Landorus here. Firing off the Wild Charge. Wild Charge into the Landorus. Does not quite pick up the KO. The Lando surviving on 1 HP. But this just means that one Geomancy from the Xerneas will take the win. Moving to the next match. Great lead. Xerneas into Dialga. The Landorus finally went away. That is quite nice. Xerneas more than happy to stay in the matchup here. Opponent is going to send in Mewtwo. Mewtwo a bit uncomfortable here, so I don't mind firing off the Moonblast just because there's not an amazing response available. Going to send in the Palkia. Palkia will be met with the Psy Strike. This is non-lethal, but it does do quite a lot of damage. Mewtwo is just incredibly powerful neutrally. Opponent going to send in Togekiss now, as Togekiss will better be able to absorb Aqua Tails compared to a Spatial Ren landing on the Dialga. That's the Flower Crown Togekiss as well. Togekiss gets the farm down, but now they're going to have to deal with Shadow Bolt switches. In comes the Raikou. Raikou farming up will be met with the Ancient Power. Ancient Power is going to do some solid damage. Shadow Raikou is extremely frail, so we are going to see the shield. Back in comes the Dialga. Dialga to be met with the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball from the Raikou does get shielded. Back in comes the Xerneas, as Xerneas will immediately be met with an Iron Head. But since the Xerneas hasn't debuffed itself, an Iron Head is non-threatening. So this is a very good spot to be as the Xerneas. Xerneas just looks to make it to the back-to-back -back close combats. Opponent will be able to force the final shield with the Iron Head, but Xerneas at the back-to-back -back moves, and the Switch Clock is not up for the opponent. They would love to be able to save the Dialga, but they are unable to do so. This close combat will land, and it's going to do massive damage, picking up the KO. Togekiss gets the farm down. In comes Shadow Raikou. Shadow Raikou Bolt switches down and takes the game. Great lead for Xerneas in the next match as it leads into Palkia. Opponent save switches into Landorus. Landorus thankfully not on the lead anymore. So now the one good counter for it, Palkia, is here to completely handle that matchup. Palkia will fire off the Aqua Tail, putting a lot of pressure onto the Landorus. Landorus is going to be committed to shield, so they are going to look to try and make a play for switch advantage. The Sandseer Storm will not knock out. The opponent not building up to a Stone Edge, so that's a pretty safe no shield for the Palkia. And Palkia is going to fire off another Aqua Tail. If the opponent really wants to double shield for switch they can and that's exactly what they're going to do they're going down two shields they're exiting with energy here the hope is that shadow raiko is going to be able to put in some work in the end game Sansir storm connects into the xerneas xerneas trying to make it to the close combat unfortunately not able to get there xerneas going to expend one shield just to preserve a little bit of hp and going for the close combat as even at minus two and being resisted i mean the landorus just doesn't have the hp Let's see, what do they have in the back? It's Solgaleo. In comes the Shadow Raikou. Shadow Raikou. Oh my goodness, the Volt Switch goes through as the opponent fires off the Psychic Fangs. Psychic Fangs is going to connect. In comes the Palkia. And the Palkia, it looks like, is actually running Dragon Tail. Very, very interesting. The Shadow Ball connects, dealing massive damage. And because they have Dragon Tail, the Wild Charge is reached. That's the perfect demonstration of why three turn moves are just substantially worse than one turn moves. Now the question will be, are the Shadow Volt switches enough to put this into double close combat range? Xerneas is going to no shield the Psychic Fangs, trying to get to the back to back close combats, getting there and it's charge attack priority. One shield remaining for the Xerneas. Honestly, if the opponent had not thrown there and had instead gone for the Fire Spin, the Fire Spin going through after the minus two defense may have KO'd there, but instead it's a CMP tie and that actually cost them the game as the double close combats pick up the KO. Another great lead for Xerneas in the next match as it now leads into Zygarde. The Zygarde staying in this matchup, which is even better. As Zygarde has no hope to flip this matchup whatsoever. And considering what's in the back, Shadow Raikou's absolute worst nightmare. I thought it was the Landorus, but it is definitely the Zygarde. Triple resisted Volt switches. No, thank you. Xerneas going to look to farm up to the back-to-back -back close combats and fire off the Moonblast, really putting the pressure onto the Zygarde. Zygarde is going to no-shield. In comes Solgaleo. 
and Xerneas is going to build up very close to the back-to-back -back close combats. Not quite there, though. The close combat is going to be shielded. Xerneas barely able to hang on and make it to close combat number two. Opponents already shielded once. They're unlikely to shield again. They're just going to go for the massive, massive farm down. Now, choosing to send in the Shadow Raikou. At the very least, in this matchup, they can't go for the Iron Head. They're forced to go for the Psychic Fangs. Psychic Fangs, I mean, the Psychic Fangs is really going to add up. So, might have been a better plan to go into the Palkia, just because Palkia, at the very least, you know can tank multiple Psychic Fangs. Whereas, this Shadow Raikou definitely cannot. And it's a simultaneous switch in the endgame. Palkia versus Palkia. The opponent is going to fire off their charge attack. Palkia commits the shield. It is going to be the Aqua Tail and returning fire with an Aqua Tail of their own. This Aqua Tail is double resisted. Opponent is going to let this through, but this does mean that they're getting farmed down. And now, as long as Palkia makes the Aqua Tail, this should just be a win because I believe the Shadow Raikou does have a wild charge available to it. The Aqua Tail gets the shield, and that should be the game as they can KO the Palkia before it makes Aqua Tail number two. But they are in for a rude awakening when the Shadow Raikou re enters the field with the wild charge loaded, knocks out the Solgaleo and takes the win. Moving into the next match, Solgaleo returns, this time on the lead, which is definitely not ideal for the Xerneas. Xerneas staying in this matchup to start with, going to fire off the close combat. We'll be interested to see if we do see a switch out after the close combat here, and we do into the Palkia. Is it the Iron Head catch? No, it is not. The opponent did go for the Psychic Fangs. In comes Dialga Origin. Due to the debuff defense, the Dragon Breaths are too much. And unfortunately, Palkia gets KO'd just as it makes the Spatial Rend. Dialga exits with energy, and this energy is problematic. We are going to see a shield from the Xerneas. Xerneas is able to outpace in this matchup, but having to go down a shield already. Back-to-back -back close combats are reached decision time for the opponent. Are they willing to invest shields into this matchup? No, they're going to let it through. They can send back in the Solgaleo. The close combat is banked, choosing to send in the Shadow Raikou. Raikou is going to no shield as Solgaleo is going to be firing off another Psychic Fangs. And in the back, it is Palkia. And this is looking like a really difficult game to win. Shadow Raikou is going to fire off the Wild Charge that does get shielded. Raikou, unfortunately, is getting farmed down. Back in comes the Xerneas. Opponent not firing off energy here. Xerneas able to fire off the Moonblast. They're going to commit the shield and they give a free Geomancy. Xerneas going to no shield. This Aqua Tail is not going to be what KOs here. Xerneas going to need very careful energy management. Unfortunately, Xerneas is going to be forced to give up the final shield here. As the Aqua Tail would be enough to pick up the KO. That ends up being charge attack priority. Going for the undercharge on the Moonblast. The Moonblast will still pick up the KO. Back in comes Solgaleo. And Solgaleo will get that farm down. The Dragon Leads are back in the next match. Leading Xerneas into the standard Dialga. And there is the Landorus save switch right on Q. And it just feels amazing to have a very consistent response to the Landorus save switch. A lot of the teams that I've really enjoyed playing as of late in the Master League, and I've had the most success with, have been teams that have a very good response to the Landorus save switch. Whether you're running, let's say, the Palkia, or in my case, I've been running a lot of Hisui and Avalug and really enjoying it. The opponent there tries to commit to the Stone Edge. They don't get there, and in doing so, they leave the Palkia healthy enough to make a Spatial Rend versus the Dialga. So, this game looking very, very difficult for the opponent. Xerneas now doesn't have the shield. Xerneas could just farm up to the back-to-back -back close combats. There's the switch out into Kyogre and in comes Shadow Raikou. But here's the awkward thing is that these waterfalls are doing more than the Volt Switches. Shadow Raikou is so incredibly glassy. Firing off Wild Charge number one, and barely survives the waterfall to get to Wild Charge number two. The opponent is going to double shield, but Xerneas has a move here. Oh, Xerneas didn't throw it right away. Xerneas could have thrown the move and denied all the energy on the Kyogre. The good news is, is Xerneas will be able to deny the rest of the energy as this Moonblast is going to KO and they shouldn't be able to farm down with the Dialga. So this is just a one game there and the opponent realizes it and they concede the match. Hopping into the final match and what do you know, there's one final Dialga lead, but this time it is going to be the origin form. Versus the Dialgas, I like to play it out the exact way that Master Irish is playing here and go straight for the Moonblast right away. You're able to outpace, and since you need two moves to knock out anyway, you may as well go for the Moonblast as that move does not come with the drawbacks of close combat, lowering your defense by two stages. And now the opponent is going to switch out into Mewtwo. Mewtwo is going to be answered with the Palkia. Palkia can tank one Psy Strike, so I do really like the No Shield here. 
Unfortunately, an Aqua Tail will not be able to knock out. So if the opponent recognizes this, they can no shield and be able to win the zeros. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to no shield as they know that they are going to be able to pick up the knockout here with the Psy Strike. But we do see that the Palkia does not want to give up switch advantage. So Palkia is going to shield and farm down, hoping to make the Spatial Ren versus the Dialga and does. It got very, very close, but able to make the Spatial Ren. The Spatial Ren KOs in the back. It's a Master League Annihilate. Okay, I love this spice. And now, the matchup that everyone was expecting to see in the Master League, Annihilate versus Shadow Raikou. Raikou calls the bait and gets it right as it is the Ice Punch bait. That's absolutely massive. Shadow Raikou at the back-to-back -back Wild Charges. You have to hope that the counter that went through does not KO, and it doesn't. Raikou gets both Wild Charges. This should force the final shield from the opponent, and now you can switch into the Xerneas. Xerneas going to get outpaced here, but with a shield remaining, able to commit the shield and get to the Moonblast. The Annihilate, very scary up energy and up a shield in the endgame, but Shadow Raikou gets the shields and Xerneas gets the victory. All in all, I really enjoyed getting to see these battles. A big thanks to Master Irish for submitting them. Shadow Raiko is a crazy investment, so massive props. I did max a regular Raiko out to 50, but the damage from the Shadow is probably quite a bit better in Rage. And as we saw there in the Kyogre Zero Shield, those Shadow Wild charges were dealing absolutely mental damage. As I mentioned at the start, this is definitely not a Pokemon that's recommended for like climbing the ladder and ranking up. It's definitely more of a pick for fun, but I do really enjoy getting to showcase those as well because sometimes we can get a little bit caught in the weeds of just like, go battle league, I have to try hard 110% of the time and like my elo is the only thing that matters. But sometimes it can also be fun to say, you know what, my goal is to have some fun today. And that's exactly what Master Irish was able to do. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.